Gobelino and the Little Wooden Horse. As the first shade of evening crept across the plain, Gobelino and the Little Wooden Horse, pursued by a pack of baying hounds, sought refuge in the deserted churchyard. Suddenly, an old priest opened the church door, and the two friends flew towards him. The next moment, there was a fearful clanging of bells. A crowd of terrified bats flew out of the church tower, and the hounds turned tail and fled, howling. Ah, my little cat, said the old priest, stooping down and stroking Gobelino. I think the haunted church has saved your life. Haunted? haunted? asked Gobelino and the little horse, struggling to recover their breath. Yes, you heard for yourselves the terrible clamour of the bells, though nobody rings them. None of the villagers will come to the church any more. At first, the two friends were too shaken to tell the priest their story. But as they recovered, they asked him if they might stay overnight. Why, yes, of course you can stay. I would invite you to spend the night in my house, but cats make my housekeeper feel quite unwell. However, I know she will give you some food. The priest went away and soon returned with a bowl of bread and milk. I hope you have a good night's sleep. When they finished their supper, Gobelino and the little wooden horse decided to spend the night in the bell tower, for they were afraid that the hounds might brave the ghosts and enter the church. Wearily, they climbed the winding stairs, until reaching the top, they saw hundreds and hundreds of bats clinging to the bell ropes with their wings folded one across the other. Suddenly, one of the bats called, It's time to get up, brothers! Now! Now! With a terrible clamour, every bat left the bell ropes and dived below into the body of the church. Round and round they flew, up and over the organ, in and out of the pulpit, while above and around them the peal of bells filled every corner of the building. Gobelino and the little wooden horse cowered against the wall, overwhelmed by the dreadful noise and the flurry of whirling black bodies. But at last, the bats disappeared, and the two friends exhausted by their day's adventures, fell fast asleep. When they woke up, they were surprised to find the bats had returned very quietly. Garbolino yawned and stretched, then turned to speak to them. Gentlemen, he said, do you realize how much trouble you are causing by making the bells ring every night? The villagers think the church is haunted. Wouldn't you prefer to have another home? Why, yes, we would, said the bats. It's very noisy and crowded here. Up in Hurricane Mountain, where I used to live, there are hundreds of empty caves. There's room for thousands of bats. Are you sure? Do you promise? asked the bats. I am sure, and I promise. But you will have to enter the caves quietly, because a witch lives in the highest cave, and if you annoy her, she might turn you into something horrid. Two by two, the bats left the ropes and vanished in the early dawn towards Hurricane Mountain. Later that morning, a very happy priest said goodbye to Gobelino and the little wooden horse. I can hardly believe it, he said. Who would have thought that the haunting which terrified the village was nothing more than the bats jumping off the bell ropes? I will always be grateful to you, my good little friends. So the two again set off the Hurricane Mountain to find Gobelino's twin sister, Sutika. The way was long and difficult, but eventually they saw that they were within reach of the Great Purple Mountain. They did not notice the small black cloud which was forming over the peaks, a cloud that circled and quivered and gradually became bigger and bigger. The cloud began to advance towards them and at the same time there was a high screaming sound. The little wooden horse looked up to see the cloud swoop lower and lower till it was flying just above the level of the plain. In an instant he knew what it was. The bats were coming back. 
screamed the bats as they dived on the two friends. Both instinctively ducked their heads, and the next minute they were in the center of a whirling mass of raking claws and flashing teeth. Gobelino bit and scratched and tore, and the little wooden horse battered. Soon they were surrounded by wounded bats, but still more bats dived down row upon row. At last, there was a lull in the fighting, and the little wooden horse jumped on his hind legs and shouted, Stop! Stop! Tell us why you're so angry! Promises! Promises! hissed the bats. Empty promises and lies! No sooner had we found a home for our families, than we were driven out again and again by that wicked witch's cat! Now we'll have to go back to the church! Wait! Please wait! Gobelino begged them. I'm on my way to help my sister Sutika, the witch's cat. Perhaps in exchange for my help, she will allow you into the caves. The bats became calmer and agreed that this was a much better idea than going back to the church. A number of them hooked their wings together to form two flying hammocks. Gobelino and the little wooden horse climbed into the hammocks and flew with the bats to the foot of Hurricane Mountain. Leaving the bats to spend the night in rabbit burrows, the two friends began the steep climb to the summit. The path wound up and up, the sun went down, and the mountains looked dark and angry. Soon they came across an empty cave and decided to sleep there until morning. They woke to find the cave full of moonlight. Standing in the middle was a small black cat with a suspicious, fierce face and flashing green eyes. Sister, my sister Sutika, Gobelino cried. Is it really you? The two cats fell upon each other, licking and purring. I came as soon as the owl brought your message, said Gobelino. Why did you send for me, sister? Sutika's green eyes filled with tears. I want to be a kitchen cat, she sobbed. I'm tired of being a witch's cat, being wicked from dawn to dark. I don't enjoy it anymore. I want to be good like you. But will the witch allow you to leave? asked Gobelino, almost sobbing himself. Oh no! Never, never, never! I must go while she's asleep. In the early morning, perhaps, after she's been out all night. But what if she were to wake up and find you gone? shouted Gobelino. Oh, she would chase me! chuckled Sutika, her eyes drying. But if I passed through running water, she wouldn't catch me. Witches can't pass through running water, but witches' cats can. And this is how you can help me, brother, said Sutika, half closing her eyes. My mistress is old and almost blind. She would never know if for a few hours you took my place. Just long enough for me to reach the stream that runs across the plain. Gobelino trembled at the idea. But how could he refuse to help his sister? And then there were the bats. If he helped Sutika to escape, they would move into the caves and leave the church in peace. There was no alternative. The next morning... He would have to return to the witch's terrible cave.